morning, everybody. I'm Kristen Miller, and I am the psychologist who's the lead on the ASAP Emotional First Aid Subcommittee. And we have put together a brilliant PowerPoint and a support training today to help you to bring simple emotional first aid to your community. I'm so grateful for all of you being here. Just a little pointer. The PowerPoint has purple slides, which are coaching slides, to help to provide you support in doing this training in your community. The rest of the slides are green and blue, and these are slides that you can present to your community. So let's do this together, and we're just going to walk through it today and learn as we go. The first slide is, of course, this is emotional first aid virtual support training. And we are presenting emotional first aid that you can bring to your community. We always share disclaimers so that, you know, you're not responsible and ASAP is not responsible for how people take emotional first aid to themselves and how they use it. Emotional first aid project has been developed over many years in response to a lot of things that are going on in our world. Trauma, the fires in Northern California, the shootings in Las Vegas, and recently the COVID virus and the terrible um, violence and looting and emotional disruption that are coming forward in our communities now. So if you need support, we have a lot of support for you in using this. We have all kinds of support materials. You can see the link on this page to the support materials. We also have an ASEPT Gmail that you can co contact us through. And you can also go to Resources for Resilience, which is a fantastic page that we've upgraded all the resources so they're so simple to use. Please check these resources out as you move forward. We also have a brand new Emotional First Aid Mentoring Group. This is where you can say, hey, I want to do a project in my community. I want to bring this to my community. And you can connect with one of us, and we will mentor you through bringing this to your community. So check us out at efa-mentors.googlegroups.com, and we will support you. So emotional first aid is very simple. It is responding to distress with a skill to calm the system. Our presenters today are myself and Amy Frost and Ganella and Ulf from Sweden and Sarah and Helen and Rachel. So I'm going to stop screen sharing for a moment and Let's just pull in together. So when you're starting a workshop, it's really important to have people come here and be here and be present and able to think. So the easiest way I know how to do that is the balanced hookup or a gentle crossover, where you put one hand on top of the other at the center of the chest, or you put the hands out in front of you and cross them over and flip them up underneath the chest, underneath the collarbone, excuse me. So I'm gonna do the simple one. And then on the bottom, which you can't see very well, my leg, my ankle is crossed over. This ankle, the same hand is on top as the same ankle is on top. And so do this breathing with me. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Feeling the pressure and warmth on your chest of your hands 
Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Staying in this position, maybe even through the whole presentation, or at least part of it. When you're doing this when you're with the community, you're bringing them in so that they can receive what you have to teach. So this is the balanced hookup and then heart breathing. So when we have an overview of what is emotional first aid, what is it that we're gonna teach people today in our session? Well, we're gonna teach people what the impact of stress and trauma is. And then we're gonna teach them really simple tools about how to manage that stress and trauma. And then we're gonna teach you, and you're gonna teach everybody ways to spread this across the whole world. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody had emotional resilience? So emotional first aid is really simple. It's so simple. We find safety, meaning we get out of the crowd that's demonstrating right now or out of the abusive situation. We go to a bathroom, we go someplace that's away. And we also find safety internally. We connect. We connect with ourselves. We understand how that stress is coming into our body. We meet that stress reaction with our breath, with a skill, with a method to calm it down. And then we create resilience. We bounce back, we calm down. We're ready to act rather than react. And then, of course, we share it with everybody. So when you're doing outreach, when you're saying, okay, I wanna do a project in my area. I wanna reach out to somebody. It's really simple. It doesn't have to be this dramatic thing. It can just be a gathering of anybody who wants to distress. Anybody who wants to learn a technique or two to calm the stress response. You can share whatever you want in this PowerPoint and you can tell them to pass it forward to, to other people. You see, we start small and then we scale up and we do bigger and bigger things. But even the simplest offering as tapping with your partner or your spouse is an offering that can go miles and miles and miles. Because if you share it and you encourage the next person to share it, and that person encourages the next person to share it. Think about all the people we've reached. So dancing with the people is really what this is about. How do we do this? We get out there, we show up, and we develop relationships. What are you needing? Can I give you some relief? Know who your partners are. Know who the people are that are going to work together with you to develop emotional safety and to de-stress together. Email everybody you know. Offer online trainings. Oh, we've done tons and tons of those. And show up and keep showing up. You know, I've been in my community through quite a lot now. My community burned down. My community had went through the COVID along with all of you. And my community is in complete disruption with the rioting and the things that are happening that are unrooting, that are unrooting the racial violence and the segregation that we're experiencing in our country. So 
you can dance with anybody any way you want. Even if it's just saying, hey, to your husband or wife, let me help you to calm down. So what is emotional first aid? Emotional first aid is really simple. It's connecting with somebody and showing them how to get relief when they're emotionally triggered, stressed, or traumatized. Why would we offer emotional first aid? Well, this is pretty simple. It calms people down. It speeds up healing. It helps people to get connected and it improves their ability to problem solve. And ultimately, it decreases conflict. Can you imagine if we calmed ourselves down before we entered difficult situations? What an amazing gift we could give to another person if we were calm and we showed them how to calm. Emotional first aid is not, and I'm going to say this again, it's not a substitute for mental health services. It's not therapy. It's not problem solving. It's just calming the system down so that we can move forward effectively. So I love this little, this little device that I developed that will really help you as we move forward in giving emotional first aid. So what I want you to do is to cross one hand over the other about three inches from the collarbone. So the collarbone's right here and about three inches from the collarbone. And we're just going to rub those spots. Taking a breath in, little circles, rubbing those spots and saying to ourselves, I can give emotional first aid. I can connect with everyone. I can ask what the need is. I can negotiate an outreach. I can show people how to calm their systems and give them emotional first aid. I can give emotional first aid. So here we go. We've already gotten them into the room and we've given them some courage. So this is your chance now in the training that you're giving to break off in small groups and to ask the questions. What is your experience of stressful situations? that you would like to be, bring calm to? What were the challenges for you in these situations? And how do you calm yourself in a stressful situation? So before we give them the whole training, we need to find out what the need is. What is it that they're struggling with? So just take a moment right now with me and think about, well, what is it that I'm struggling with? What are those emotions? What are the situations that are very hard to deal with? It might be the challenge of how to stand with the people in the rioting. It might be the terrible emotional upheaval that you're feeling inside as you watch people unroot the system, systemic violence. It might be the terrible loss and loneliness that you're feeling right now during COVID times. Now, this doesn't just have to be about you, but this is what we can think about today as we go through the emotional training. It might be when you're in a group, it might be about what the group is challenging. When we did this training for the first time 
in the sheriff's department in Orlando, we put the people together in groups and they had very different needs. Some people had needs to have a short technique that they could use to calm a prisoner down who was incarcerated and very upset. Some of them had a need to sit with somebody who was grieving after a terrible loss, or some, some had a need to be with somebody after they'd just been in a, a terrible accident in, in a car situation, and they needed to just tap and calm that trouble warmer down. So it's really about helping your group identify what the need is and then teaching them how to respond. So emotional first aid for yourself and others. When we're actually training in emotional first aid, we are asking to become centered in ourselves, to know how to do these skills, to be stress and trauma informed, to understand what the impact of stress and trauma is on us and on the people that we serve, to learn tools for calming and to share it with everybody. That's the mission. That's the mission. So be stress and trauma reformed. Understand your body's natural response to stress. So the stress response, and I'm just going to go through this with you really quickly today, because you probably all know this, but maybe you don't remember. Anytime there's a threat, the body does one of four things. It fights, it runs, it freezes, or it flops. This is how your survival system, your stress system, the polyvagal nervous system, sends messages to your body to protect itself. So fight is an aggressive response to a threat. Ugh! Get away from me. Flight, we all know this one, getting out, getting out as quickly as possible. Man, when that fire came into town a few years ago into Reading, we had to run, literally. In 50 minutes, they got 38,000 people out of town. So that's the response, getting out, moving out. Sometimes, and most of the time, for just a split second, we freeze. We can't move. We freeze. This gives our stress system a chance to assess, okay, what is it going to do? And then, if the best response is to freeze, to not move, it'll continue doing that. Otherwise, we'll fight or we'll flee or we will flop. And in flop, all the energy comes out of the system. And it's like the system is dead. This is a particularly wonderful response when violence is done to the body because it softens the body for impact. So trauma basically comes into the body. It comes in through the brain stem, which is right here. And it sends a huge message down the brain stem to the body and up to the brain. And then we have the brain, the cognitive capacity flips and it is all automatic reaction. So we can't think, we can't digest, we can't, we can't do anything except defend ourselves, get out of there or flop. 
So when we stay in this spot, we experience symptoms of stress and trauma, sensory activation. We experience anxiety, fears, emotional distress. We feel jumpy, jumpy and hypervigilant and easily irritated and angry and reactive. We're unable to sleep. We feel tired and numb and our stomach hurts. Our heart has arrhythmia and we have aches and pains. The longer that we stay in a sensory activated spot in a freeze or fight response, the more likely we will develop ongoing physical symptoms like we are seeing in the ACE studies. The more adverse childhood, early childhood experiences that we have, the more likely that we get locked into a toxic stress response. And we never discharge that toxic stress response from our bodies. So we stay locked up and we experience many, many, many more physical problems, addiction problems, depressions, and mental health issues. Now, when you're sharing emotional first aid in your community, you're going to have to decide to ace or not to ace. And meaning, we don't pre generally when somebody has just been hit by a car or running from a fire, we don't generally talk about their past stressful experiences. We may experience it as we're with them in the moment because it is a cumulative stress response. But we don't usually talk about those responses then. We just meet the emotion that is present right there. And we meet that with a breath, a smile, a tap, or whatever is available. So if you're going out to serve people who aren't in an immediate crisis, and they have are people who've experienced a lot of cumulative stress, then yeah, I would talk about ACEs. If not, I would just help them understand what they're experiencing in their body, what is happening with the fight, flight, freeze, or flop in their body, and show them how to get some relief. So emotional first aid is really simple. It has three steps. That is three lovely, wonderful steps. And you see here, the first step is always safety. We get them here. We get them safe. We get them out of the situation. And we meet them with comfort and a smile. And the sex, second step is stabilization. Can I breathe? Can I be here now? And the third stage is self-regulation meaning showing them ways to calm themselves down. So let's, let's kind of dissect this just a little bit so you understand when we're presenting this. Safety is really about finding this safe place, smiling, connecting with somebody, asking them, how can I help you? And then teaching them how to connect with themselves. So let's do this for just a minute together. So I'd encourage you to cross your hands over all the way to your shoulders. Or you can do it closer in. And I just want you to flap the wings of the butterfly. Pulling into safety, coming here and being with me, coming here and being with yourself. 
taking a couple of breaths in. And noticing, noticing what it is that you're experiencing right now as we go through this seminar together. When you're supporting somebody, smiling, noticing what they're experiencing, asking how you can help them. helping them to be in physical safety as well. So you can do this with the calming hug, the butterfly hug, which we just did. And then, everybody, we stop here. We stop and we give our people who we are training an experience of how to be safe with them and how to create safety outside. And then the next step is stabilization. Stabilization is really about being here in safety right now and being connected inside and we do this really simply with being here now exercises looking around seeing what we see knowing what we see the four seven eight breath and the blowout so let's do this together so being here now Everybody do this with me. Look around. What do you see in the room? What do you hear? Can you hear my computer go around making this recording? What do you feel? When you put your feet on the ground, what do you feel on the ground? And sometimes if people are really still in the traumatic situation, we have them count by threes. Three, six, eight, ten. Now, another way we do this is with the four, seven, eight breath. So, we're going to do this backwards though today, and we're going to do it together. And so, this is our practice time. So, remember, you're going to share how to get here, and then you're going to give them a practice time that they can do it together so that they're embodying these skills. So do this with me. We're going to do it backwards. So stand up if you can. I am going to try to stand up. And we're going to take our hands, put them in fists, and really feel that fist. Draw them up over the top of our head. And then we're going to make the sound. <sighs> and blow it out and throw it on the ground. Throw it on the ground. So we'll do that. We'll do that three times together. All right. And then you can sit down and you can do it one time slow. Now, you can also do this with four, seven, eight breath, which is kind of the military breath that they do it. You breathe in for four, hold for seven, and breathe out through your mouth for eight. Four. Seven, eight. Okay, now notice. Are you here? 
Can you feel your butt on the chair? Can you feel the breath coming in? Are you de-stressed? So this is what we do. When I was out with PG&E and the people were coming off the lines and they were stressed out of their mind, they laughed at me, but I promise they pulled it down and blew it out with me. And you could visibly see them coming back into their body and the stress releasing. So once we get through stabilization, then we get the most wonderful experience of doing self-regulation. And this is where we can get more into the experience of calming the body. And we've, we've already got them here safely or here safely crossed over. And then we take a look to see what is this person needing? What are they needing from me? How can I serve this person? Are they really anxious? Maybe I'm going to have them tap on the center of their chest or bilaterally tap on their chest like gorilla tapping. Are they completely shocked out? They, they're white and they, nothing's moving. Are they sick? Can they cannot get moving? Then I'm not, I might do all points on. I might have them thump underneath their collarbone point and underneath their arm and at the center of the chest. Really a hard thumping and lightly underneath the eye to ground the energy. I might have time to do a whole comprehensive tapping where I can tap all the points in TTT. And just a minute, Ulf and Ganella will walk us through the Corona version of TTT. And I might only just have time to do a couple of breaths and to tap on the back of the hand or the side of the hand or underneath the collarbone. You will see when you sit with somebody and you connect, what is it that they need? And how can I give them some relief? So then again, we go again, practice time. We teach them some self-regulation techniques. We have the person focus on, remember those questions, what is stressful for me? How is that for me? What's hard for me to do? And then we bring a calming technique to them so they can calm their bodies. So Ulf and Ganella are going to show their beautiful COVID virus tapping video at this point. Hi, my name is Ulf Sandstrom. I'm from the Peaceful Heart Network, and I'm standing in Stockholm right here to help you calm down. We have specialized in different techniques in how to keep calm. Mm -hmm. And normally we do what we call TTT, or trauma tapping technique, that we tap on um, 13 points of the body, including the face. But now during this time of coronavirus, uh, we have been asked to, um, to do a version without using the, the points in the face. So you can just follow us and we'll show how to do it. What you can do is you can connect ever so lightly with whatever bothers you, and you can just feel whatever you feel, and if something is bothering you, you can give it a number between zero and 10. Now you start with the side of your hand, like 12, 15 times on each point. You go to the little finger, the inside of the finger, 
and then go just to the next finger and follow to the others. So the long finger, the index finger, and the thumb. From there, you go to the chest, so you tap on the chest, a bit widely over the chest. We call it gorilla tapping often, because of the gorillas knowing how very well how to do this. And then under the arm, so it's on the side of the chest, not up in the armpit. Okay, and then go to the other hand. So the side of the hand, what we call the karate chop. And then the little finger, the ring finger, the long finger, index, thumb. And then again on the chest. And the other side of your body. And then we add also on the top of the head. So you can do it with both of your hands. Perfect. And then we do breathing. So you breathe in and breathe out. You breathe in and breathe out. And that's one round of tapping, and now we do the second round. And as you notice, we're doing each half of the body. So pick a hand, whichever hand you want. Side of the hand. Tip of the little finger. Ring finger. Long finger. Index finger. It's cold in Stockholm. And it's even colder up here, where there's still snow. It's snowing. Yeah. We're in the same country. We are so many miles apart. Chest. Under the arm. Side of the chest. And then you go to the other hand. And you go through the fingers. Now... You don't need to count a specific number. Just follow along and do it more or less as much as we do it. And because we like this to be out in the fresh air, that's where you can be also on distance to others. There is some wind coming. And it's the chest. Side of the chest. And after this, we go to the head. Yeah, you can hear the wind blowing now. Yeah. And breathe in that fresh air. And if you cannot be outside, open the window and get some air in. Close your eyes and connect again to whatever was bothering you and see how much it bothers you now. Good luck. Just try it out and share the review with others. Find calm and pass it on. And so I just want to come back to this so that you absolutely know. Emotional face first aid is the simplest, most loving, most compassionate offering that you can give. And it is just simple. As simple as this, excuse me. We're going to help them find safety. Come with me. Can you go to a safe spot in your house? We're going to connect with them, or we're going to connect with ourselves. We're going to give them a skill to meet that stress reaction, a skill that will calm the system. And then together, we're going to create resilience. And then we're going to share it with everybody. It doesn't matter if this is a one on one stress relieving project like i did with my husband when we had to evacuate we sat on the couch and we calmed our system before we left the house in the fires it can be as big as a giant red cross group where we're all tapping together and calming our system after we've gotten to safety so I'm going to encourage you 
to create your own self-care program. Walk our walk. Meaning the importance of self-care, it's just amazing how important it is to have self-care, especially if you're going to offer emotional first aid. Because if you come in all stirred up and unregulated, you're going to make it worse for the person. But if you come in with the gift of your heart, with the gift of your calm and some skill, you are going to offer that to the person or the group in front of you. So know what's happening in your own body. Build your own stress management routine out of the R4R videos or any other videos. Talk to your friends, talk to your peers. And anytime you experience something that's stressful, debrief, connect, ask yourself, how was that for me? What am I feeling? And meet that with some calming technique. Also talk to your friends. So I'm encouraging you to spread emotional first aid in your community. And when you're doing this training, you're going to encourage all of the participants to spread these skills. So at this point in the training that you're giving, you're going to ask them, how will you use these skills with people you serve? What situations would these skills be beneficial for? Can you, and we're asking your participants, and I'm asking you, can you teach these skills to your friends? So in these brainstorming groups now that you're going to have and you're going to share with the whole group, you're going to create an action plan. How are they going to bring back what you just trained them in to their community? And I encourage you to have a lot of discussion around this so that you can see how they can do this in their community and how you can do it in your community. So as we go forward, I just want to welcome you to share the beautiful experiences that many of us have had of doing outreach in our community. We, we all know Ulf and Ganella, who um, have our masters at emotional outreach. And today we're going to get to hear from Sarah, who's a newbie, who's doing a beautiful job in our community, internationally spreading emotional first aid, and Amy, who's always our grandmother, who always keeps us in action, and our fearless leader, Rachel, and um, who has made internet outreach into the greatest gift that there could be during the COVID times and these racial rioting times where we are standing up against violence to our people. So here we go. Get ready. And you guys are going to be taught by the masters. Oh, I'm so grateful for you being here. And I so look forward to what you are going to bring to your communities. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the training. Everybody here is a master and everybody listening to this is a master because whatever you know how to do, you, you will be able to help people. It's not very hard. Would you agree, Ganilla? Yes, of course I agree. That's always the case. You can yeah, always but, start it wherever you are with whatever you have. And what we said when we were asked, you know, how, how do we think? We work in a lot of different countries. We work with a lot of different uh, populations, survivors, um, victims, um, first responders, refugees. And in all these situations, just like Kristen was telling, it, it's not really that hard. You need to get people's confidence and you need to show what you're doing. So the first point is to gather anybody who wants to de-stress. 
Yeah, and then um, you'll show whatever kind of stress relief exercise you actually prefer yourself. It can be tapping. For us, it has been a lot of TTT, trauma tapping technique. Let's go also do other stuff. Breathing exercises, some dancing, some music, whatever you have, so that they can feel results, so they can feel some kind of relief. Because talking about stress relief is actually not going to help anybody. That's like talking about bicycling or reading a book about how to dance tango. That's not, it, what you need to do is just create any kind of experience inside the person. And once you've done that, um, if you do that with the community leaders or just somebody they will listen to, uh, they will tell other people to come and listen to what you have to say. And then you just explain whatever they want to listen to from this PowerPoint. So you could yeah. jump through the slides back or forth, or you could just take one of them. Yeah, or whatever you find yourself comfortable with explaining, whatever your own experiences are, because it's always good to be personal, you know. And then the most important, or one of the most, everything is important, but one of the most important of these points is to tell them to, to pass it on to, to the next person, you know. To these techniques are like made for being spread to many people, because that's what the world needs. I mean, now in lockdown, but in any time, people are stressed and people are traumatized. Yeah, and we of, often people ask us, you know, how, how do you get lots of people to listen to you? Do you barge in and tell them you have help for them? Or how do you mm -hmm. get in touch? And like Kristen has been doing in her community so much, and we all have here, and, and we expect you to do as well, is simply start with the people you know. And if you don't know them yet, you get to know them. Hopefully you get in touch before something happens. So people just know that, oh yeah, this person, knows something about emotional first aid. So when something happens, you tell them, I can help you. You show them something, explain what they want to listen to, and then you stay in touch. Just like with any friend in the world, every person you meet is a possible friend. You just stay in touch. Do you want some more? Can I come back? Have you been using it? And if you can help one person, you can scale up to two and four and eight and 16, 32. And if you know the story about the chessboard and the rice, Trains, you will know that you can reach the world in 30 days. Yeah, so it is like that. Or so you find an ally, you find somebody in that group or in that community who you know and who is willing to assist others. Who, somebody who is already a people person, who is the one who can connect you into the community. That is, and there are a lot of, of resources that you can find. So you will find resources explained uh, in the end. There are lots of links and stuff. And if you need to get in touch, the ASAP Humanitarian Committee is here for you. You, you talk to us and we will talk back. This is something we do together. Thank you. You guys are phenomenal as always. Lots of great resources. So uh, we want to give you an experience of somebody who is just now really working on stepping out there. And that's Sarah. So Sarah, we'd love to hear from your experience and how you're out doing your outreach. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, I've just been <laughs> muted. So I just wondered, you know, if you wanted to know the real key to my newfound confidence. And really, it's just simply about being to actually remember these tools. Um, I'm fairly new to energy psychology, and I dropped into the whirlwind of a committee in 2018. And it's been an amazing journey for me uh, with such amazing support and acceptance and encouragement from this group. So I'd like to thank them for that. Um, my contribution really has been supporting a drive to simplify the emotional first aid offering so that you can actually easily understand it and be able to use it easily. I've played the guinea pig filter role. So if I understand it, it's game on and it can go into the techniques. Um, with energy psychology, there are lots of different techniques in the toolbox, um, but my personal findings have been that you you can have all the techniques under the sun, but they're useless if you can't remember them and you can't easily use them. And so really the only way I can actually remember it is to practice and use them on a daily basis. With this in mind, um, I decided that I was going to actually write a story which would help me remember and visualize what to do when I was in a particular situation. So the story is in your link of, um, of resources, but it's about a pansy flower and a yellow hose. And it tells how the pansy overcomes her trauma of nearly drowning from everyday life experiences without really noticing what was happening to her. 
It takes you through the emotional first aid techniques that can help reduce panic and anxiety, how you rebalance the system, how to prevent symptoms of post-traumatic stress. And it outlines the importance, as Kristen was saying, about safety first, stabilisation second, and self-regulation third. You could use the story to just sort of subtly introduce someone to these simple exercises that we can all do every day to take responsibilities and help ourselves. Um, and you're sort of taking proactive action to prevent difficulties into the future. And it shows how we can all create resilience ourselves, that we can rely on ourselves to take action um, instead of just relying on everybody else to try to dig us out of a situation. So you practice the techniques, you build your own resilience and you can know what to do in a stressful situation. And my aim really is to um, help the committee and everybody else to be able to use these techniques as easily as you brush your teeth every morning. Now I'd like to hand back to Amy, our fairy grandmother. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Yeah, um, it's such an honor to watch you and everybody else blossom in, in their outreach. So um, quickly, and, and I'm here, Kristen is here. We've been doing this for a long time. It's uh, so exciting to watch what's happening. I um, am very wired into the veteran community here in Las Vegas. And Kristen and I were part of the, well, it's really like a five-year program, but really intensely a three-year veteran to veteran program where we work with the veterans to support themselves and each other. And the good, it was a you know, wonderful program, a lot of great stuff, but one of the most, I'm almost makes me want to cry, one of the most amazing outcomes of that was October 1st, we had uh, the shooting here, which was a major event in our community. And because of the, what we had done with the Veteran to Veteran Project, we were wired in to communities throughout our community. And so I was able to go to the leaders of each of those circles and support them supporting their community. And it's an ongoing process. It's about creating relationships. It's about maintaining relationships. And so um, most of what we just did, this is so exciting. So because of all the connections, somebody came to me and said, you have to meet this woman, Julia, from Friends and Family of Incarcerated Persons. They're, you know, they're struggling now. They can't see the people. And so we, they need help. And so because of all the crazy that was going on, there was no place that Julie and I could meet. So we went to Whole Foods, you know, we got our masks, reached shopping six feet apart and talking. And so the, the, we met, she said, I need help. I said, let me get Kristen with us. We had a phone call, then uh, that was Tuesday. And on Sunday, we did the, um, the session with Julia and it's up on their website helping the family members. So that's how it happens. You know, you create those relationships, find your people, uh, be, do what you're comfortable doing, and you've got support, we are here for you. All right, batter up. Hi, I'm Rachel, I'm the chair of the committee. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area in Oakland. And what I decided to do was to do a Zoom group and uh, once COVID happened, a friend of mine and I did it for a while and then I just decided to do it by myself. What we did is we just sent out emails with links to a, a Zoom call. We just sent that out to um, a huge list of people that I know and two large lists that I'm on. One is a list of women who brainstorm together and there's hundreds of people, it's been going on 20 years. Another is a list of about a thousand people um, another community that I'm on and I just we just sent it out and then we tell people you can invite anybody and so I'm now doing two groups a week and you're totally welcome um, to come I'll send out to the people the link for the Monday night group at 7 p.m. in California um, or yeah West Coast um, so basically um, I'm not I'm doing a lot of different things in that group um, <clears throat> including energy medicine, which is the techniques we've been teaching. We're doing tapping and I'm doing a little sound healing. So you can take whatever you do. One of the nice things about that is it's actually caused somebody who's getting the email to pass the information on to somebody who runs a whole program for people who are disabled and can't get out because they go on trips in a van together. And so um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but that, that's how the word spreads. Those folks are, um, 
are may end up getting their own zoom with me and then i've also sent it out to all the people i teach energy medicine and a lot of other uh, mental health topics to people who work with kids who are in the system and i just sent out an email to that whole list of people and said if you want the the, the link let me know i can have 100 people on a zoom so right now it's really easy to get people do this stuff and then refer them to our website i'm just going to go through these really quickly so you just see we have the um this specifically the COVID-19 version of TTT, which Kristen did, and you can see all from Ganilla doing that in Sweden, in, in the cold. Um, and here are other resources that are available, including um, a bunch of um, audios about doing this work and um, more of that type of thing. And there's a one pager, and then here's a video um, there's lots of videos available on um, trauma tapping technique, um, and there's an app available as well. So um, the app, you can get in your app store under self-help for, for trauma, and all you're gonna get the PowerPoint. So when you get the PowerPoint, you'll have all that, and it's on the resource page. And then if you want more training, we also have some information for you about that. Next up is Helen. I'm going to introduce you to the R4R uh, .support site. Here you'll see that there are five rectangular boxes on the center of the, of the first page, and they are feelings that people may be able to identify with, and from identifying their feelings, they can use exercises that are linked to these feelings to help them calm themselves. Let's click on Scared Anxious. And that takes us to a new page with videos on the page. On to the right is uh, instructions, very brief instructions, as well as downloadable instructions. When you click on a video, a disclaimer will play at the very beginning of each video. Please do play this through the first time you do this with your, uh, your training participants. It's important that we all acknowledge and all the participants acknowledge that taking responsibility for our own health and well-being is essential. This is the butterfly hug and what you'll notice is there is there are no words it is just simple calming music with a demonstration of techniques that are available to follow along with. And you might choose one of these uh, in your planning training so that um, your participants can um, go home with uh, a printed off instruction so that they've actually demonstrated some of the techniques themselves and can feel most comfortable with, uh, with doing it when they arrive home uh, and then pass it on, share it with their family and friends as well. I'm gonna just ease back into the main site again and just show you that there, there are uh, brochures in several languages available on the site. You can feel free to download those for your training programs. You'll find links to other sites including the Self Help for Trauma which is animated, uh, the Peaceful Heart Network as well as Freya and also a link back to the main ASAP site. And let's direct you to the About page. Here is a brief information about the ASAP Humanitarian Committee and we'd like to invite you to consider getting involved. There is an email link to this button and also we are on a mission to spread this work throughout the world and if you would consider donating we'd greatly appreciate that as well. On behalf of the Humanitarian Committee, I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the r4r.support site and I'm going to turn it over to Kristen and team again for some Q&A. Hi there. Thank you so very much for the training. Um, it's, it's been really very, very inspiring. And thank you for all the work you're doing. Uh, my big question is this. I have not uh, gone through and had certification in any of these training techniques with EFT or, um, or um, energy psych. I've taken some courses. I'm a psychotherapist. I'm a meditator. I'm a hypnotherapist. I'm well versed in working with people. Um, but does it require us to have some sort of certification to be able to, to do this uh, with, with the people in the community? So what I have done 
in my community with other therapists who are not certified is I have um, given an emotional first aid training a tiny bit short longer than this, where we actually practice the techniques together. And then I, they are all using it in their practices without certification. Um, and I think the requirement from my perspective, and Rachel, you can answer this as well, is that you practice and know how it affects your system, what you're sharing, how it affects your system, because then you'll be able to track how it's affecting the client system that you're using it with. So Rachel, do you want to talk about that too? Um, yes. So I don't think it's about certification. It's about your own sense of competency. <clears throat> and one thing that I have done in the past and I or someone else on the committee could do is a training on the techniques where we just meet for an hour and we just do them together. If people are interested in that, we're happy to set that up. Um, and it can be done really quickly in the next week because there's no prep. I can do it with my eyes closed. There are lots of people in this committee that can do it with their eyes closed. So basically we do this stuff and I teach it all the time. The issue is really exactly what Sarah said, practicing. So that when you stand up in front of people or you sit in front of a computer, you're able to say, put one hand on top of your heart chakra, which is right here, and put the other hand there and breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Anyone in this group can do that. You just want to remember what to do. And some people are less, um, feel less confident and then practice. Practice with the plants in your house. Practice with the people if you do have someone you're living with and get feedback or do it with a friend through FaceTime or whatever to get feedback and then you're ready to go. And you don't have to do 10 techniques. You can do two things with people. Amy, did you want to respond? Yeah, for me, it's like find the context within what you normally work. My, my focus is in career. My focus is in the workplace. And so when you, oh, you have an interview coming up, you want to try a technique that will help you? I don't even talk about energy psychology. I just say, here's a technique that will work for you. I use it all the time with everybody. I just say, these are stress tools or these are motivation tools or whatever works for you. You just got to do it. Just do it. Colleen, do you have more questions about that or any other? No, I just want to say thank you. That's perfect. I have been practicing and using these for years, actually, with clients, just not in this way where I'm doing it as an outreach. Um, and since I'm not, you know, fully certified, I wasn't sure if that was the requirement. So that answers a lot, and I very much am appreciative of that. Thank you. Great. And get certification if you feel called, please. Oh, absolutely. It's financial. I'm working on it. <laughs> One thing at a time. <laughs> Okay, next, uh, other questions? I just want to say something. Um, this is Lori. Uh, I'm a chiropractor, and I use these techniques on every patient I see all the time, and I've been doing it for years and years. But I am very, um, I lack confidence, and I've not done group trainings, and I just want to thank you all. This is, I feel totally confident to do a group training right now. With And I've been doing one-to-one. -one. I've been doing Zoom meetings right now with some of my patients since, just with the tapping, not adjusting them, but I feel totally confident to go out there. So you guys rock. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I can give emotional first aid outreach. <laughs> I'm doing it already, even if I don't think I am. <laughs> exactly. Do people have any questions about how to reach out to their community? Like, I'm thinking of this, but how would I do this? Or is this a good idea? You might have gotten inspired, but want to ask us. We've got, we really wanted to give you time to hear your <clears throat> concerns or problem solve with you. Hi. Um, yeah, that was my question. I was wondering if anyone had any examples that they could share now or later with the replay when it sent out the. Um, for uh, emails or a Facebook post or anything like that to be able to introduce this and to reach out to people to see if they would, um, uh, for those that are interested to join in on a Zoom meeting uh, to share this with them? So one of the things that I did is I just sent out an email and it said, um, 
the first one we did was called Finding Calm. You can steal that. Finding Calm, free Zoom gathering. And the next one I now have is Nervous System Regulation During Times of Crisis, free Zoom gathering. And that's all it said. And I keep sending it out to that women's, that group of women. And every week I get new, I've got, I've got a following now and I have repeats. So, and so it just, our, our new people keep coming. So you just, every week you put it on your Facebook um, and you just keep sending it out. And what did you say? Thanks. What did you say again, Rachel? Was it nervous system regulation? I didn't quite hear you. That's what I said. Nervous system regulation in times of crisis. I actually like finding calm better, but I had been doing that with someone who was doing mindfulness and I didn't want to get it confused because we decided it was too much to do two things in the hour. And so I just renamed it, but I encourage you finding calm. That's what everyone wants right now. They just yeah. want to be calm, finding calm, finding my center depends <clears throat> on your group how you know, calm is not a new age woo woo word julie yeah. has a question sorry to I, interrupt hi yeah i was asking about the the mouth open the exhale mm -hmm. with mouth open i learned from the buteco breathing people that keeping your mouth closed all the time is a way to reduce um is to increase blood carbon dioxide, which also increases the ability of hemoglobin to reduce oxygen to tissues. In fact, they're suggesting humming, mouth closed humming, as a way to increase oxygen. And there are people doing oming in waiting rooms now in hospitals, which is a way to increase, humming is a way actually to increase the oxygen in the lungs to keep your mouth closed when you're exhaling and slowly exhale. I wonder if you want to talk about any theory behind. Um, open mouth exhaling that would counter my understanding. I don't know the answer, but I know Boteco breathing is a specific kind of breathing. It's a specific technique developed by a specific person, and it's great stuff. Does anyone know why we do mouth open? Because it's just a diff there's so many methods. You could go to five yogis and they'll teach you five different ways. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, yeah. Yo, I, I'll, I'll speak just a moment to that. Um, we're, when we're, the couple exercises we're giving you with uh, mouth open for exhale, that's not to be done 24 seven. That is momentarily right. right for that exercise. And it helps people to literally blow out, get rid of, release quickly tensions and, you know, go on. Great, Raya. Raya is always a fund of knowledge on all of this stuff. So normally, ideally, we breathe with our mouth closed, but in specific exercises, we will do open mouth. This is, this is Helen. Um, I can only speak from my personal experience, and as Rachel said, do whatever you feel good with. But, um, you know, I, I try to give the example of we're holding stress or a, some discomfort within our body, and the breathing out allows us to release that. And it seems to really link with people, makes sense, that they can actually feel like they are getting it out of themselves. Right. And, so, and I'll just say two things. Um, it's pretty hard to stay uptight if your jaw isn't locked. Good point. Um, try it. Yeah. Try, try it uh, and drop your jaw. It's pretty, pretty hard. Um, and so I think that in most of the relaxation exercise trainings that they've adapted from yoga breathing, they suggest that you drop your jaw um, because it, it releases the tension response and it also releases the polyvagal nerve. Mm -hmm. um, that, is, that is the theory behind it. And so, but in COVID times, we are recommended to not drop our mouth and breathe out through our mouth when we're out in society because the nose has more filtering capacity and it does increase um it increases the co2 so i'm just i'm just letting you know that that's the the recommendation in public is to breathe through your nose um so um that's that's what i know about it um i hi everybody this is natalia um i didn't know how to raise my hand so i just chimed in now 
I, I am a Kundalini yoga teacher and from the yogic perspective, we learn uh, different breathing techniques, which are called pranayam, and they all have different effects. But in Kundalini, most of the exercises are done with the mouth closed. You inhale through the nose, you exhale through the nose because of the different, um, uh, p the pingala, and uh, there's different systems in each nostril that activate different sides of your brain. And so it's not that one is better